Welcome back. We've been putting out a lot of videos lately, but nothing has been getting as much attention as uh, House of X and Powers of X. So today, let's talk about Powers of X number four, something sinister, secrets are revealed, and more mysteries are teased. Today on Comic Book News. <laughs> Welcome back. Today it's uh, Powers of X, number four. Powers of ten. Okay. You go ahead and call them the ten men if you want. I'm going to keep calling them the X-Men, so this is Powers of X. Let's go directly to the Million Dollar Comics Cam and see what is going on today. So... Powers of X, number four. Remember, this book is split up into multiple uh, eras of the X-Men. X-Zero, uh, meaning the very beginning and the formation of the X-Men. X-1, present day, about 10 years after the formation of the X-Men in chronological time. Uh, then there's uh, X-2, which is 100 years in the future, and X3, which is 1,000 years in the future. Hence all this, it's actually powers of 10, not powers of X. All right. Egghead, go build a rocket ship or something. Uh, let's talk about comics. So uh, we, we knew this was uh, teased as something sinister in code in previous issues, so had a feeling it would involve Mr. Sinister. Uh, and here we are, starting off on x0 so the original year the foundation of the x-men and seeing that this is magneto and xavier together from the beginning it's not exactly clear which timeline this is i'm going to assume right now it's either the beginning of timeline uh, nine which we've been seeing in house of x or perhaps it's where timeline 10 is going to begin uh, it's not totally clear we'll think about it so uh, I really like the way Mr. Sinister is played here. Mr. Sinister is a character I, I, I was never really super into, but uh, as I research him and see uh, his sort of uh, 18th century Elizabethan origins, his, his, and the way Hickman sort of plays that for comedy in, in this issue, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying the character now. So the idea here is that Sinister is a human. He's been alive since 1700s, 1800s, something like that. New Apocalypse. They struck some kind of deal, made Mr. Sinister like immortal and have all kinds of cool telep telepathy and telekinesis and whatever. But his real deal has always been DNA, right, and genetics. He's sort of, he's almost like the evil counterpart of Moira McTaggart in some ways in that I mean, we always assume she was a, a human and he is a human and he sort of um, supposedly, his last name is Essex and he originally posited the presence of this Essex factor and maybe that's what led to X factor and X gene and all this stuff. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a little too clever for its own sake. But anyway, in here he, we see he's got tons of clones of himself, including like sycophant toady clones who like suck up to himself and then he has him killed and you know it's played for comedy and it's actually pretty humorous um and then we finally get to see uh sort of the mr sinister we're more familiar with with the with the flappy sylvestri cape um and this is the one that has mutant powers had mutant genes spliced into his dna and uh and we sort of learn about a little more about that we'll get to that when we talk about this next part we're gonna skip over this for a second the text piece is here it's kind of funny it's played like a almost like a gossip column from bar sinister which is this island where mr sinister and all his clones live together so it's really weird it's chock full of clues some of which i think i understand many of which are going over my head so i'm going to need your help out there people to decipher this stuff we'll talk about it in a minute we got two full pages of that stuff um moving forward we go to uh x1 this is the x-men now uh more specifically it's them uh several months ago and this is what we're seeing here 
you know, I've been speculating a lot about Doug Ramsey and his role. I still think he's a pivotal player. It's pretty obvious he is. Obviously, he's not the guy in the X-Men Professor X helmet, but um, he is obviously playing a key role here that I think is going to be revealed. And let's just notice, you know, he's still got the sort of like warlock techno stuff built at least into his design, right? That's just a note. We'll note talk about that in a minute. So he's introduced to the island of Krakoa, uh, who Charles Xavier can speak with telepathically, but Doug is like, you know, you're really only grokking him on like a, like a Star Trek kind of like, like, oh, uh, island good, Professor X good, we friend kind of, kind of tip. And, you know, Doug, because of his mutant abilities for, uh, for languages, understands him much better. Um, for instance, if he gets one word out of the island here, and he's like, whoa, no fricatives, which makes sense. But the layering is dense, more than I would normally expect. I'm picking it up, but I need more. Ask him something else, how he's feeling or whatever. So like one word in, and he's already like kind of understanding it. Doug Ramsey's one of the coolest X characters. The, his language power, they've, they've actually had some interesting wrinkles on the way he's able to tap into that to read like body language and other things try and make him more of a badass but what i mean how much more badass do you need to be than uh this power of communication which is like the most powerful thing a human can do i digress uh anyway we learn a little bit more about the secret origins of krakoa through doug right who for the first time the island can finally talk to somebody and sort of unload and he's like we were okara the one land, and then they got split by the by the enemy, the Twilight Sword of the enemy, and then they got split into Arako and Krakoa. If you're not catching this, Okaro, Arako, Krakoa, all kind of like anagrams for each other. And uh, from the chasm between them, from whatever wicked place they came, the enemy poured into this world. Not really clear what's going on here, but wow, just another. Uh, additional sort of like wrinkle to the mythology of Krakoa and the X-Men. Hickman loves this stuff, man. He layers it on top of, it's, it's an onion within a an, uh, an onion, right? Whatever that means. So anyway, we get a peek into Apocalypse uh, in the past and uh, the island saying it knew Apocalypse. It knew him when, way back when. In fact, it knew his original four horsemen who were sort of imprisoned uh, and sealed uh, when they fought back that enemy of Okara or whatever it was, right? And so we've never seen them before and they were never seen since, And they're, but they are alluded to um, in the text pieces that we'll get to pretty soon. So um, Doug finally gets hip to what Charlie's plan is, right? Xavier is like, let me tell you what I'm, what I'm really thinking here and he he it's he's his reaction is well that's ambitious right and but he's on board and he's like you know what it's going to take me probably you know several months to a year at least to fully grok what kakoa is laying down to understand its language and 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 i would be the only way to communicate um with Krakoa because nobody else can truly understand him. So he spent his time building a system building, I guess this, this tree is, is an interface to the Island, right? So the tree is a way to be able to communicate with Krakoa without having to go through Doug. And we see it here broken up into several different teams. And what I think we're going to see is these are going to translate to the other x-men books we're gonna see like x-force and new mutants and 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 whatever so we're seeing sage for transit and monitoring black tom Casty defense observation i think that's maybe x-force or marauders or one, one of these books that's coming out trinary here and the beast for overwatch and data analysis and then it's speculated but not not confirmed that there's a secret skunk works deep within Krakoa where Forge is working on crazy new biological machines to bring to bear for the mutant cause. Exciting. So next we make a leap uh, to X-Men X3, which is X-Men the year 1000. So we didn't do an X2 in the year 100. 
Uh, we just are doing uh, 0, 1, and 3 in this issue. And this is another return to this Phalanx story. And I guess, you know, Phalanx are, are an X-Men Borg-type enemy from previous books that I wasn't, um, I wasn't in my X-Men era exactly. Uh, one thing I'm noticing here, I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but I alluded to how Doug Ramsey still has the sort of warlock look to him. And, and these guys certainly, it could just be coincidental because they're both sort of techno-organic entities. But I am pretty sure, especially the way in the previous book they wanted to make sure to, that none of the plants fell into the hands of Orcus on that spaceship. That there is some kind of connection with Doug Ramsey, techno-organic, and... Uh, the the bridge between them that's something and i believe potentially is where nimrod is going to truly arise from you heard it here folks first folks so anyway year 1000 we see they have a plan and the and the uh, inhabitants uh, of the future strike uh, make this sort of entity that the phalanx absorb the phalanx whole deal is they absorb techno societies artificial intelligences and if they deem them worthy, then they ascend. They bring that intelligence into their own sort of collective and continue the expansion. Okay, I'm still not seeing the direct connection to the X-Men in this part, but I'm sure it's going to come full circle. There's no way this stuff is coming out of nowhere. It's just this is the part, the stuff a thousand years in the future, as you might think, we lose a lot of context and a lot of thread from the present, so it's hard to say what's going on here. Um, this ends with a quote from uh, Professor X. I'm not afraid of what I've done, but I do fear what it will one day cost. Right? And so so what happened here? Um, Professor X, uh, the one thing that came out of the whole Mr. Sinister deal is they, they struck a deal with Mr. Sinister. And he says, you know, basically I need you to catalog all the mutant genes. And we're going to get you started. We're going to give you ours. We're going to give you Professor X and Magneto. That's pretty good, you know. That's the top shelf X, X gene stock. So we're going to give you that. Um, we want you to catalog it all, but um, you need to start doing that. But then first you need to begin the good work. And then I need you to forget why you're doing it and that we were ever here until the day I tell you to remember. Right? So this Mr. Sinister is a sleeper agent created by Xavier. This is one of the things that I, I posited that even though Xavier knows what's potentially what could happen because of his knowledge of Moira's past timelines, that there's all kinds of ways of, of getting around that storytelling wise so that we could say some of the things we've seen in continuity actually happened. Um, so anyway, this stuff plays right into this. I'm not going to read all this stuff. I'm not going to read it all. Uh, so what I'm going to do though is I'm going to read a couple of selections here. Um, you should go through and read these and tell you what you tell me what you think. Um, but the one thing that's that's kind of interesting here is oh, sinister secrets revealed. Certain people are wondering where the tyrant dispelling sinister got his mutant gene. And while that isn't really an interesting story, whom the DNA originally belonged to is. And then underneath that in brackets it says John Proudstar Thunderbird right which also seems to tie in to some of these other clues here so sinister Spe secret um number two and speaking of fashion the whisper network has turned into a roar regarding the return of this trend-setting mutant who was cut down in his prime will someone please tell all these mutants to stop wearing human clothes and join the stampede across their island full of flowers to the flower that's the fullest does that mean the tree the that that we saw Doug Ramsey create? I don't know. Who is a mutant who was cut down in his prime? The return of this trendsetting mutant who was cut down in his prime, it has to be Doug Ramsey. And 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 they're linking it to the flower. So the, the, the obviously Doug Ramsey, according to this, sinister secret number two is is uh is tied in. But let's take a look here. Sinister secret uh Number three, years ago, a deceased red-headed pretender made a pact with the devil. When she passed on, 
Most believe that any secrets she had went with her to the grave. Won't everyone be surprised when they find out not only this is not true, but she left behind a whole lot more than secrets. So, are we talking about Jean Grey? Are we talking about Madeline Pryor? Are we talking about Rachel Summers, perhaps? I don't, I, I don't know. Um, I'm just going to read one other of these secrets here. Um, two brothers jumped out of a plane and for the longest time until he was discovered many wondered if there was a third if we told you there were more would you believe me probably not so to me that's referring to cyclops and havoc right the two brothers and that's they 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 had to bail out of a plane and that's the accident that made cyclops lose control of his powers and it turned out later there was a third summer brothers summer's brother uh uh vulcan uh, who has crazy energy powers and has been imprisoned. Uh, now there's, I, they're referring to perhaps other summer siblings. So that's a, a tantalizing little tidbit. Um, and then the last secret, sinister secret number 10. Which brainwashed mutant sinister was replaced long before a certain bald somebody knew and has been in on the game for almost as long as the game was being played? Shh. So what is that telling us? Maybe that Tr Xavier thinks he has a double agent in Sinister, but maybe uh, somewhere along the way that got shortcut or short-circuited and Sinister... We're in for a surprise, folks. We're in for a ride, right? And, um, you know, we've been in on a big ride here at Comic Book News. Uh, we've been growing, been bringing on a lot of subscribers. Man, I was super happy with my last interview with uh, retailing superstar Brian Hibbs got a lot more views and attention than I thought of. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about that kind of longer form content. Are you guys looking just for kind of like focused new comics reviews or do you like when I go off on these sort of industry tangents and, and other things? You know what? I do those things because I love them, not for the ratings. So you can expect to see a lot of that uh, tossed in here and there. But I'm interested to know. Uh, what do you want to see here on Comic Book News? Anyway, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. And uh, thanks for watching and, and reading comics and supporting this channel. See you next time.